Oh my gosh, this is this is this is just so unbelievably soft. Hi everyone, Norman here. Today's video is super special because it's all about the rare Vicuña wool. This yarn costs 250 to 300 US dollar per one ounce skein and is often labeled the most expensive commercially available yarn in the world. Recently, I had my 40th birthday and I treated myself to some precious skeins of Vicuña yarn and I'm going to share my experience with you in this video. How soft is it? What does knitting with it feel like? And ultimately, is it worth buying? So, let's dive right into it, but before, comment right now with the most expensive, exclusive or rare fiber you ever worked with and whether you enjoyed it or regret buying it. So, here we have one little ball of the precious fiber and the first thing you will notice apart from its creamy texture and golden hue is the size. One ounce of yarn is actually not a lot. This yarn here is sold by Pasquale Filatti Naturali and runs for only 204 yards. Still, one of these little balls here set me back by around 250 US dollar and one ball is probably barely enough for a headband. For the longest time, Vicuña yarn was even more expensive than gold and maybe that's why it's also called gold of the Andes. These days it is a little bit cheaper but mainly due to the dramatic rise of the gold price in the past two decades. The incredibly shy and delicate Vicuña live high up in the Andes in South America at altitudes of 3200 to 4800 meters. They are related to the domesticated alpaca but only reach a shoulder height of 85 centimeters and weigh up to 65 kilograms. And they are incredibly rare. Due to poaching, the population declined to only 6,000 animals in the 1960s when they were declared an endangered species. The population has luckily recovered dramatically since then with around 350,000 animals recorded across the Altiplano today. The downs have a diameter of 12 to 14 microns, making it much softer than cashmere. But an adult only produces around 500 grams of vicuña wool per year. The yarn is obtained by shearing after massive roundups called chaku, and then it is processed manually. And this is an incredibly labor intensive process. A single worker will manage to dehair one kilogram of vicuña wool in one month, working eight hours per day. Can you imagine that? And I guess this explains what, among other things, why Vicuña wool is so expensive. So, let's talk about the elephant in the room. How soft is it? And I do have to confess, this really is the softest yarn I ever had the pleasure to touch. I mean, this lofty cable spun thread probably helps, but if I had to compare it with cashmere or quivered, it's definitely softer by far. A lot of fibers are said to be soft and then you are kind of disappointed, but Vicuña definitely delivers on its promise. And it's quite important to note that it's not a kind of fuzzy softness, but rather solid. And for lack of a better word, a creamy softness. While the staple length is indeed short, the yarn doesn't exhibit extensive blooming, something people we are familiar with cashmere yarn may know. So this is the exact same as a spinning method, so a cable spun yarn. And, but this is cashmere and you hopefully can see that the cashmere yarn is already in this state blooming a bit. It has this little halo while the vicuña yarn is quite solid and stays that way. Like any other fiber, Vicuña yarn comes in different qualities. For example, here is another skein from A.R. Königstein 
which is not nearly as soft and creamy as this one. Mind you, it's still very soft, but the difference is quite noticeable at first touch, probably because this is not woolen spun, but it seems to be a worsted two ply. The annual production of raw vicuña fiber is only about 10 tons and the majority of it goes to high street labels. In fact, most of it goes to Loro Piana in Italy. Imagine, let's say you need 350 grams of yarn for the average knitwear item such as a sweater. This means you could only produce 28,000 vicuña sweaters a year. That's probably what a single H&M shop sells in a month in a single town. That's how rare this fiber is. In recent years, Paco Vicuña, a crossbreed between Vicuña and Alpaca, have been introduced. These produce a very fine fiber as well that is almost as soft but less pricey. So here one ounce will cost around 150 to 200 US dollars at least in the highest quality. And the advantage is that these are available in different natural tones. For example, this light creamy color or a lighter brown. Still, the natural Vicuña yarn here is definitely a league of its own. But what about knitting with Vicuña yarn? Well, I can't even begin to tell you what a true joy it is to hold this yarn in your hand. It's just so unbelievably soft and light. And in this case, it is, well, some kind of lace yarn, some woolen spun uh, four ply thread. And I do have to admit that, that makes it quite difficult to knit with. Not only because of the fine gauge, but also because the yarn is incredibly splitty. So you really have to pay attention when you knit more complicated stitches. And on top of that, I find that the color, as nice as it is, it sort of camouflages with the, back, you know, it kind of blends with the background and your skin color. So in a very difficult to put way so knitting with it is very difficult. So I would call myself a somewhat experienced knitter but with this yarn here I can probably knit at half or maybe even only a third of my usual speed and I would definitely say that is something to consider. Of course when you know that each stitch costs like 10 cent or so you kind of want to proceed very carefully anyway. Another thing I have to mention is the sheer, well, lightness of the fabric. And that actually makes knitting very difficult. I am used to feeling my yarn and that it offers resistance. And knitting with Vicuña yarn, well, it's so light and so soft that it sometimes feels like you had nothing on your needles and you were knitting empty air. This might sound dreamy, of course, and I guess it is, but it took me quite a while to get accustomed to it. Something you may be able to see further down here where I started the cuff of this glove. The ribbing looks, well, sort of wonky and I hope some good locking will fix things. Now, obviously I can only comment on uh, this particular yarn here, but then again, it's not like you will find the Kunya yarn at every local yarn shop either. There are only a selected few uh, producers worldwide. So I guess my impressions are valid anyway. And because this yarn is so delicate, it is almost always sold in a natural undyed tone. Chemicals would only take away from its softness. But I personally don't think this is an issue. This rich cinnamon color is just so, so nice. Now most people will be tempted to knit lace patterns with it because of the sheer price. But I decided to knit gloves with it because I figured if I spend a fortune on yarn then I better feel what I paid for the whole time. And what better projects, um, project than gloves to constantly feel the true quality of a yarn. 
But here's something I need to address. Knitting a swatch in Vicuña yarn felt beyond wasteful. When you know that little piece in a fabric in front of you costs 10 or 15 US dollar, that feels horrible. But of course, I mean, you wouldn't want any uh, project with such an expensive yarn without a swatch. So in my case, I went as far as knitting one full project in a similar yarn with a similar yardage before I knitted even a single stitch with the Vicuña yarn. So the pressure is definitely on. So the big question is of course, do I regret spending so much money on a pair of gloves? In my case, I will need two full skeins to finish my pair. That's round about 550 US dollar. A lot of money. I actually had to save quite a long time before I was able to afford it. But do I regret it? Definitely no. I mean, it was my 40th birthday and as a knitting blogger, I just wanted to treat myself. And the experience truly has been just so surreal and the softness unparalleled, period. At the same time, you don't get 10 times the softness compared to other luxury fibers such as cashmere or angora. So that's definitely something you need to consider. The difference is maybe 20% if that. And I would definitely say that getting a good baby camel or a royal alpaca yarn from a reputable manufacturer will get you almost the same experience. Not the same, but still nice. Because after all, Vicuña are part of the camel family as well. And an undyed baby camel yarn will have almost the same color and will still be incredibly soft. And in that context, I feel it's very important to know that by no means do I want to compel you to invest an outrageous amount of money in yarn. This is how I earn my money and knitting with Vicuña yarn once is, if you want, part of my job, a very pleasant part. Also, while soft is certainly nice, a lot of projects actually benefit from a sturdy yarn, socks for example. And I feel it's an erroneous belief of the past two decades or so that the softest yarn are the best and that is simply not true. And of course, there are a lot of people who can't afford this kind of yarn, even if they save for it. And there's nothing wrong with that either. I trust you understand that I produced this video as a kind of novelty show. My life won't be better on a fundamental level just because I own a pair of Vicuña gloves. I could have knitted the same pair using a lace sheep wool yarn and they would still have been nice. The knitting world is, you know, already full enough of yarn and needle and there's a lot of gatekeeping going on and I really don't want to add to that. Anyway, that was my video on Vicuña wool. Please like it if you enjoyed watching and maybe comment if you would buy Vicuña yarn if you could afford it and what you think about it in general. And of course, consider subscribing to my channel in case you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.